So uh, these are the instructions. We have to go through these instructions, and there are two sections: section A, section B. Okay, let's go through the scenario, and this is the scenario. It's very important that uh, you go through the scenario. So. And now in the new syllabus, this is the format. At the beginning of the paper, the, the uh, house style is being mentioned, meaning that all company documents like letters, reports, need to follow this particular uh, setup. We are uppercase letters with the company name. That means all the wherever the company names appear appears, it should be in capital letters. The top margin should be set to four centimeters, and the logo should always be in the top right hand corner. This is for company documents. So starting off with the fixed activity, task A1. Cell so needs a logo to be used on some documents. We'll put a new word processing document. Okay, let's do that. A1, your name, candidate number, and cell number in the header. And save the document as task A1. So let me do that first. Right click, new. And uh, we're supposed to save this as task A1. Open it. And if you notice very carefully, it says. Uh, Edge center number in the header. All this should be put in the header. So we can directly come and double click on the header area. It opens and we can put, put your name, candidate number, center number. That's enough. Come out of the header. Just double click in the middle area. The header closes. We already saved the document as task A1. Now it says we are supposed to create the logo. The logo must be fit for purpose and be a simple drawing that combines lines and shaded shapes. Shaded shapes means the shape should have some kind of a color inside it. It should represent a sailing boat and include the company name or the initials ITSC. So for this particular task, I'm going to go with paint. Let's open paint and uh, let's go to the requirement again simple drawing that combines lines and shapes represent a sailing boat let's get that done first so um, I'm going to take this line shape and uh, going to draw something like a boat now if I want a line to come straight you know at an angle you press shift while pressing shift if you draw a straight line it comes very neatly okay and then what I'm going to do is uh, I'll draw another line from here just come and click in the middle of this area and again click this and then I want another straight line so I'm going to press shift again doesn't come very well but no problem something like that and then uh, I'm going to have to draw another one more line uh, what I'm going to do is click here press shift and go for a straight line something like that I think that's enough click here again take the line tool again click here and go from here all the way up to there yes that looks good enough not bad and uh, now to make it move more like a boat I'm going to I'm going to draw a kind of a triangle there and the top I'm not sure how this works yes something like that um, yeah that looks fine as well and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some shading for it. So shading basically means putting some color inside the shape. So I'm going to take this paint bucket tool. And I'm going to fill this with, uh, let's take orange. Fill this with orange and maybe fill this with dark green. Okay, this is my colors I have selected. Some kind of shading has been done. And also do not forget, include the company name or the initials ITSC. I'm going to go with ITSC. I'm going to take text box there and draw it over here inside this gap and I'm going to name it as ITSC I'm going to keep the name of the I'm going to keep this color as black select it until I want it to be black you can select a suitable font that you would like um, whichever you like I'm just selecting this you can take any font you like and maybe bring it somewhere into the middle yes that looks fine now once you come out of this text box you can no longer edit that text so make sure you're happy with what you have done here uh, how about if we make this italic as well no, it doesn't look good let's keep it as it is yes that's fine so now this unnecessary white area this white area and this white area should not be there only the logo should be there only the content of the logo should be there this unnecessary white area should be removed so I'm going to select the area I need from here to here this is what I need and I'm going to click on crop okay so just let's double check have I fulfilled all the criteria yes first one is okay second is okay third is also okay 
Save the logo as ITSC logo. So let's come here to file, save as, and uh, let me go to my folder. It's on the desktop. Uh, same to, and let me save it as ITSC logo. Now, when it comes to images, it is always better. If you, uh, it's, I'm sorry. When it comes to logo, it is always better to save it as PNG. When you save as PNG, there would be no white color background. Get what I mean? It would be a kind of a transparent background. So when it comes to logos, it is always better to save it as PNG instead of saving it as JPEG. When you put JPEG, the white color background will remain. But if you put it as a PNG, this white background does not remain. So it is always better to keep it as PNG. Okay. So let's click save, and uh, we're done with that. Uh, next, what are we supposed to do? Instead of copy of the logo in document task A1, let's do that first. Come to come here, right click, copy, go into task A1, right click, and say paste. That is done. And then, uh, do not finish this stage. Task A1 B answer. This question on the document task A1, explain one advantage of using a vector image rather than a bitmap image for a logo. So now before we go into that, I would like to give you an example of a vector image. For example, this particular paper, when you open it, uh, if you move over to the top, this is for example an example of a vector. So look here, no matter how much I zoom in, the quality remains the same. If you look here. The quality remains the same. No matter how many times I zoom in, it remains the same. That is because this is a vector. Each time I zoom in, a mathematical formula is being run by the software. For example, I'm using Adobe Reader right now. Adobe Reader is running a mathematical formula to keep enlarging the content. See, it doesn't get, uh, it does not get blurry. Okay, but when you have a bitmap, for example, what we have over here is a bitmap image, and as I keep zooming in you can start to see it's becoming blurry because it is made up of pixels and each time I zoom in those pixels are becoming more and more visible okay so now an advantage of using a bit uh, vector images an example of using a vector images uh, let's read the question again question goes as uh, one advantage of using a vector image rather than a bitmap image so uh, the benefit of using a vector image is that it can be enlarged enlarged as much as needed because because it it can be enlarged as much as needed uh, while a bitmap image can be only enlarged, enlarged only to a certain extent before it starts becoming blurry. Okay, so let's just check whether we have properly answered our question. So they're using the word explain, so we have to come to a conclusion. So if you may, if the logo is saved as a vector image it can be used for any printing purpose without its quality being reduced okay i believe that would be a good enough answer I'll just quickly show you what the marking scheme also says. The marking scheme goes as a vector image is created using coordinates which can be recalculated when resized, which means it can be enlarged without, without loss of quality or distortion. Okay.